Hi, everyone. I wanted to take a couple minutes with you to talk about the project that's coming up. Sometimes when you have directions to read, it's not, oh, my phone's just going off. It's not as easy as just listening to me explain it to you. So hopefully this five minutes will help you with that. Um, the project is a big percent of the course. So it's something that we need to understand going forward. Let me share my screen. Clicking on the wrong thing for a second. Let me go here. Um, let me find it. So I'm going to go to my dashboard and there's our course. I click on that. I'm going to go to modules. Everything for the class is found in modules. I'm sure you know that absolutely by now as you're taking all uh, the quizzes and discussions and all of that. So we're going to go down and we're going to go down. We're in week four. So we're going to go down to week four. And this is the Buddhism Sikhism week. And right down here, we have midterm responses. And one of the questions I ask you is what is your what is your project going to be about? How do you find information about the project? It's right above it. And it's called Project Ideas. And I wanted to point out that in the course catalog for this class, it states that a field trip is required. It does say that at Mount Sachs course catalog, it is required. Um, is it mandatory? Well, it was always mandatory and then COVID hit. And when COVID hit, I canceled that. I came up with a couple alternatives for students. Um, and I'll carry those alternatives into this semester, but I still really want you to do the field trip. The field trip is the full flavor of the course where you're not just learning about Jainism and Buddhism and Hinduism and Sikhism. You're going out and exploring one of those religions. They're all local to Mount Sac. Let's say you're taking this class from the Bay Area. There's lots of locations up there. You're taking it from another state, lots of locations. Anywhere in the world, you'll find a tradition that is something new to you. You've never been, you've never explored it. And if this is your opportunity. So that field trip is still the requirement. If you have a transportation problem and you're like, there's no way for A, B and C reasons I can do the field trip because I have a transportation problem. That's why I'm taking online classes, et cetera, et cetera. Then I have the backup plans for you. But really I'm pushing for that field trip if possible. Let's click on the project ideas. Okay. so. It's due week seven, if the forum, I'm sorry, the folder will open up week six, it's due week seven. It's about a three to four page paper. It will include pictures independent of those, the word count, thousand words minimum. It could be obviously a lot more. It will definitely include pictures for um, whatever projects you do, um, but for sure the field trip will have you in the picture at the location, because that's like a no brainer that you've completed it. Um, it doesn't have to be MLA format, but. Um, if you're taking English 1A and 1C, you're probably familiar with that. You can implement that in your paper. Um, again, I'm open to the spacings and the, all of the fonts. There's a couple options. You don't want to do like font 20. That would be ridiculous. But certainly, um, I'm, I'm very open and lenient as long as it's clear and legible. I also allow you uh, and to write it up in sections, not just one long paragraph. It has to be written in sections. And what sections uh, are required is, is listed in these directions. I also allow you if you don't want to do a written report to do something creative and an idea would be to create a film on your field trip and it wouldn't just be pictures of you walking around certainly you would be narrating and covering those sections that is required but it could be in film form instead of written form or some students like to uh, present a lecture with slides and so forth of, of your present of, of your field trip so that would i mean there's a lot of interesting ways to approach it it doesn't have to be the tr traditional paper although most students feel comfortable with that I have a rubric here for you. So the number one thing on the rubric is just evidence you've done the project. You went on that field trip and you've completed it. And how do you do that? Pictures, loud truck is going by, I apologize. But pictures of you at the location must be in. Sometimes I see like a student's head and it's like, like really, I can't tell what's behind them. I got to really see the location and then see you there. Okay, so that's really uh, an important one. And then also requirement number two is to do something there, not just pop you know, your car in park, run up, take a picture and run away, actually to attend something there. So if you go to a lot of these locations, they have a ritual, they have a meditation, they have um, some ceremony, they have a lecture, they have a chant, something where you're doing something more than just, uh, here's a picture of me and then leave. Um, you can also go and interview somebody instead if you want, if you say, well, I can't attend this particular event, but I can't interview somebody, a spokesperson there. Um, if somebody takes you on a tour, a very in-depth guided tour, there's a lot of opportunities for you uh, to do something there. And then optional, and this is optional, 
it could be considered extra credits required for the honors students, but not the non-honors, is to actually read some of the sacred writings from that tradition. So if you're covering Buddhism, you can read the Dhammapada. If you cover uh, Hinduism, you could read the Bhagavad Gita. Do you have to read all of it? Certainly not. We're talking 30 minutes, just some familiarity, some reading of the beautiful literature, the poetry, to really feel the flavor of that tradition and not just about going to a location, but reading what is considered what you would call their Bible. Um, and, to, and to read it for about 30 minutes and then write up kind of a summary of what you read and document that. That's optional for you. Um, so what else do I want to say? So I explain um, uh, four things about this project. And really, I was looking for a lot of students don't have a background in Eastern religion. So I was really looking for an Eastern religion. And so local to Mount Sac is the Hindu temple in Chino Hills. Beautiful. And apps, all of that marble was hand carved, it was brought in from India. They have a center in Delhi. It's an exact replica of that center in Delhi, except I went to the one in Delhi and they have some cool things like a little boat ride and stuff there, but it's really beautiful. And they have a restaurant there. They have services there. They have an Archie service with a fire service. That's really neat. Um, dress a little bit more on the conservative side to any of these locations. Um, if you show up in shorts or, or a skirt, they'll give you a wrap to put around your legs at the service, not walking around, but just at the service. There is the Buddhist temple in Hacienda Heights. It is the largest Buddhist temple in North America. It's spectacular. A lot of students have said, oh, I've been before. So the assignment is to go someplace you've never explored, never been to. It's nowhere connected to your family religion. It's not your cousin's religion. It's not your parents' religion. It's not connected to your family. And it's someplace you've never been before. Because you might say, well, my mom's Buddhist, but I'm not. It wouldn't be one of the opportunities for you to go there. I want you to do Sikhism, Jainism, Hinduism, explore something different. Okay. Um, so besides Buddhism, we have the Jain Center in um, Buena Park. It's like one of the rare Jain centers. There's only a few in the United States. So that would be something that might be interesting to you. Um, Jain Centers, I believe that's closed on Mondays because it's near, um, I think, Little India or somewhere, Artesia. It's actually in Buena Park, though, so I'm not sure. But I believe it's closed on Mondays. Check the schedule wherever you go. Make sure you've done your research there. And it's also the Chitambra Jains, so they wear white. And so there's a sign saying, please, you know, avoid wearing dark colors because it's an honor of the Jain tradition. You don't have to wear all white, but a lighter colors. Like, for instance, I'm wearing a dark blue. I wouldn't wear that. Um, and then the Sikh location is in Walnut. So it's right near Mount Sac. And so that's a fun one for a lot of students. They have beautiful services on Sunday. They have also evening services on uh, certain days of the week. They'll feed you. They're vegetarian at the temple, not necessarily in their home life. Some are, some not, but in the temple, it's all vegetarian. Um, so where you'll get the food, you'll get the food at the Hindu temple. There's a restaurant. The Buddhist temple has a restaurant and the Sikh temple will feed you for free. Um, the other ones are like $5, hardly anything. Okay, so that would be something fun and interesting. If you have zero Islamic background, no connection to Islam, that could be an opportunity for you. Now, a lot of students have it, what's called the Judeo-Christian background, so I was avoiding that uh, as an option because there's such familiarity people have. I want you to explore something really outside of the comfort zone. Okay, I'm trying to make this a little faster. M information on the field trips, where the addresses are, where their websites are, you know, how to dress and what to do, that is where you look, you click on that link. And then here's the backup plan. So the field trip is what I want you to do. The backup plan is, let's say you have transportation problems, I have to do something at home on the computer. Take a religion and apply the seven dimensions to it. And again, each dimension has its own section, include pictures and what religion you can choose. You can, for instance, choose a religion you feel like we didn't cover in this class, like Shintoism. We did not cover Shintoism. I love think Shintoism is really cool. Did not have time to cover that. That could be a possibility. You wouldn't cover any of the new religions because we've already done that in the lesson. You'd cover um, one of the major world religions. So let's say, you're, well, we already covered Buddhism. Can I cover that? Certainly. And what I recommend is covering a branch of it. So, because we didn't go, we went general Buddhism, not really specific. So you can go Tibetan Buddhism, or you can go Nirshin Shoshu Buddhism. There's all different branches and you can pick one. You can go Zen Buddhism and then explore just the seven dimensions of that. Hinduism, the same, lots of branches of Hinduism, self-realization fellowship. Um, you can explore the Hare Krishnas, which is called ISKCON. International Society of Christian Consciousness. And there's some uh, ones local to uh, America, California. They have a lot of centers here, but if you can't go explore the center, you can do the seven dimensions. So I'd focus a little bit more narrowly if you can. Uh, for Jainism, let's say you wanted to do that, you would do maybe one branch of it, the Shatambra and not or the Dagambra, something like that. Okay, so I gave you some ideas here. 
And you don't want to do like the whole religion of seven dimensions. That's too broad. You want to be more zeroed in and more specific and you know, learn something that you didn't already learn in the lesson. And then here's examples of film students did on the seven dimensions, kind of longer. I think these are honors projects, but they're really well done. So that's why I wanted to show them to you. Your film doesn't have to be, you know, 10 minutes or something. Um, I think you can five to seven will suffice as long as you're covering those seven dimensions. If you're doing the film, you could do this in written, obviously, but you can do a film as well. So I'm just trying to see you can have options there. This is my on the third list. It's not necessarily I don't, you know, like this one. I really do like this one. But a lot of students um, try to squeeze this in last minute because we, we all know that students do things last minute. This requires you to work on it like 10 days in advance. It requires you to watch some Netflix movies, It requires you to read an article incorporate all that into the report it requires you to meditate for four to five days document each day take pictures of you doing it it's not something that it sounds oh that sounds like a fun one um but it's something that does take effort and it's something that you do way in advance and it's lowest on my list because not that i'm not going to grade it poorly i will give you just as you know same amount of points as the other ones um if done well it's just that i it's something i threw in during the pandemic times um I might move away from it, but I do love meditation. A lot of our religions have a focus on meditation. Certainly the Eastern religions do, and so do some of the Western as well. Um, we've, we're gonna learn about the Sufis with Islam and you have um, the mystical branches within Judaism and within Christianity. So that's something that is allowed. Um, if you have any questions, send me a note, but it's something that you have to do way in advance, not last minute, which I think some students have tried to do and it does not work. It has to be fully documented and um, demonstrated that was completed. Okay, so those are your three field uh, projects, I'm sorry, and one of them is the field trip at the top. And again, try to do that if you can, because um, that's something that is really part of the course and really makes the class extra special if you do that. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing. Uh, I wanna thank you guys. I'm The sun is blazing on my face, I'm not that red. It's just the way the window's hitting me and my webcam is horrible. Okay, that's my introduction to the project and let me know if you have any questions and namaste everybody. Namaste. Bye-bye.